Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to take a look at the easiest way to calculate voltage drop using the NEC. Before we get started, if you'd like to, go ahead and like and subscribe. We just want to see you win. We're here to help you in any way that we can. This channel is designed for you as a resource and a library. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get to it. Okay guys, if you do an internet search, you'll likely find this formula for voltage drop right here. And this is correct, but I've reordered the letters in order to help you remember it easier. If you get this, you'll have this for the rest of your life. This is how I order it. It's the same equation. It's voltage drop equals 2 kid over C mill. And we're going to break all this down here in the next few slides. This represents a math equation. The line is a division line. And the top numbers represent a multiplication problem. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can put the multiplication symbol in between each one. But the numbers together is implied multiplication. If you'd like to, you can put it like that. Okay, so let's break this down. 2 will be used as a constant multiplier for single phase. 1.732 will be used as a constant multiplier for three phase. The K is K factor. Think of it as the multiplier of your wire. Copper is 12.9 and aluminum is 21.2. I represents current in amperes and D is the distance of the circuit. C mills is the area in circular millimeters of the wire. What I love about formulas is you just plug and play. So what is the voltage drop of a 60 amp circuit using number eight copper conductors that is 200 foot long on a 120 240 volt system? Okay, so you just take it out, put two kid over C mill. So two is your constant for single phase. Then your multiplier, we're using copper in this case. So it's 12.9. Then you multiply it by the amperage and then you multiply it by the distance. Now we need to figure out what the C mills are. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that now. Close your code book. We're gonna use the table of contents method. Okay, head to your chapter nine T8 tab. So if you look in the table of contents, head to chapter nine, we're gonna be using table eight and there's actually a tab for it. So use your chapter nine T8 tab. Okay, so this is gonna let us know about our conductor properties. Okay, chapter nine, table eight. We find a lot going on here, but we're gonna hone in on what we need to focus on. For voltage drop questions, you typically just use two different columns. The first one is the size AWG column on the left. That's going to be your size wire. So first select your size wire. We're using a number eight copper. Second is two columns over. It's in the circular mills column. So go two columns over. Make sure you're in the C mills column. I want you to highlight both of these columns all the way down. So highlight the wire size and then skip a column, skip over uh, two columns. And you're gonna use the circular mills column and highlight it all the way down. Just highlight those two columns. Okay, so chapter nine, table eight. We find our size wire. We slide over to the area in circular mills. Okay, now we just do the math. So we take two multiplied by 12.9, multiplied by 60, multiplied by 200 equals 309.6. Then we just divide. You divide up into 309.600 and we're going to get a voltage drop of 18.75. Now the NEC recommendation, not code, but recommendation for any individual circuit is no more than 3% and 5% for the whole system. 
120 volt circuit, is it going to function properly if it drops 18.75 volts on the way? No. So this is not going to be an acceptable circuit. You're going to have to increase your wire significantly in order to compensate for this voltage drop in this circuit. So you could do the math and figure out what size wire you could use. And this is the fastest, easiest way to do voltage drop calculations.